Welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. I'm here with Travis Bolt. Travis Bolt is running for the state 29th district in uh, Texas. And let me tell you, this young man has a whole lot to tell us. Travis, welcome to Politics Done Right. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well, Egberto. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So let me tell you something. We've been talking about the Democratic Party becoming vibrant, the Democratic Party getting a whole lot of people involved now that are there talking to the people that are there addressing the needs of the people and not just what we've been used to for such a long time, sort of insulated from where these people are. Why don't you first tell me a little bit about yourself and then we'll get into the mechanics of how you are going to win this race and how others around the country can look at what you are doing to win their races. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Um, so my background's in healthcare. I'm a small business owner who runs a senior care agency. Um, so I've been sitting on the sidelines for the past eight, nine years, watching our failed healthcare system and having to refer patients either to services that cost tens of thousands of dollars a month or some of literally the worst state run programs in the country. Uh, Texas rates 51st in the nation for access to senior care. Um, I'm running in District 29, which is mostly suburban Pearland, Northern Brazoria County. Uh, and for the first time in a generation, uh, this is a very, very competitive race. Um, what was a 20 point blowout in 2016 for the Republican incumbent is now showing a tooth and nail uh, neck to neck race. And with Democrats recently pulling ahead. And so we're really uh, excited that the grassroots efforts that have been laid down here over the past four years. Um, I was working on the Beto O'Rourke campaign in 2018, and uh, we got to do a lot of that grassroots uh, foundation laying. Uh, has really started to pay off, and we see a lot of energy and a lot of excitement um, to bring change here into one of these massively expanding suburbs um, and a massively changing demographic here locally. Now, did you guys have a, a, uh, a sort of a fundraiser meetup with mm -hmm. uh, Beto O'Rourke recently? Yeah, Powered by People and Beto O'Rourke uh, tuned in for our race here on uh, last Thursday. We raised nearly $10,000 on that event alone. And uh, yeah, we're really seeing, again, for the first time, the state party and statewide organizations are starting to focus here locally on how do we move, uh, how do we move change into these traditionally Republican stronghold districts. Um, and we've seen a massive amount of support from uh, the Texas Democratic Party, as well as Beto and other state level organizers. Um, which is the first time that that's ever happened in this community. And what a lot of other people critiqued in previous elections, that, that Democrats were only focusing on traditionally blue areas, that they weren't willing to get their hands dirty or to engage in the grassroots outreach that was necessary. We're really seeing a different, uh, different campaign here locally, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of Democratic activists who've been activated specifically in the past four years really hitting the ground running as far as uh, grassroots outreach, voter registration, fundraising drives, and we're seeing fire in the Democratic Party like we've never seen before. I think this is a, I think this is a template that we should be using all over the country because, I mean, uh, you, as you said, you're in, a, in an area where you had a 20-point lead, or rather where Republicans had a plus 20 in, in the election, and here you come in, a young, vibrant person that is going out there and actually talking to the people on the grassroots level. You know, what we've always said about Texas is Texas is, has never been a red state. Texas mm -hmm. has always been a non-voting state with politicians that machines don't get into the neighborhoods where the machines need to get into to really see what the needs of the people are. Now, tell us a little bit about your platform. What do you stand for where it comes to healthcare? What do you stand for where it comes to protection of the people? Right now, they're trying to, they're trying to change this election from being one of protecting mm -hmm. Americans from COVID-19, protecting Americans' uh, well-being, both economically and socially. 
into one of law and order. Tell mm -hmm. me where you come on all these particular issues. Sure, and I'm happy to get into as much detail as you'd like. If anybody wants to check out my website, travisfortexas.com, we've got full blown out policy positions uh, on just about everything. And I've identified six key platform elements that are important, not only to me locally, but to uh, the people in my district. First and foremost, always has to be healthcare. It's what my experience is in, and it's the dinner table issue that everybody reaches to first. First, uh, particularly with COVID-19 being the drastic pandemic that we have seen here locally, there's a very stark uh, difference between myself, my opponent, and the Republican Party as far as taking this seriously and making sure that we are, you know, running our campaign in a conscientious way. So, uh, unfortunately, as much as I would like to be having in-person fundraising events and in-person rallies, those are completely off the table. So we do a lot of things here on Zoom like this. Meanwhile, my opponent is if hosting you know 50 plus person barbecue fundraisers which is i mean just really irresponsible really yeah um and uh the we we know that the policies that he's pushing are also going to be on that same level of minimizing the 20,000 texan deaths that we're going to have here by election day and uh, you know sweeping that under the rug so access to health care has a lot of policy level solutions uh, uh expanding medicaid is the one uh, as close to a silver bullet proposal as we have at the state level we've left 60 billion dollars in federal grants on the table over the past 10 years and have 5 million uninsured insured uh, Texans for the efforts. So by expanding Medicaid, we get a lot more people that actually have a way to pay for some of Travis, that. Travis, what you've just said is, is very important. And I think sometimes we gloss over it too often, too easily. Specifically, uh, the, the, we have left, first of all, when the, the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act came out, we left it on the table where 100% of the 100% of coverage was going to be provided mm -hmm. to our uninsured by the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care, followed after three years with it covering 90% of the coverage. That mm -hmm. would have meant business, that would have meant more employment, that would have meant a medical center better funded, that would have meant having more doctors. I wonder if we should not make that case more emphatic to let people know that there was nothing conservative about not accepting the Medicare expansion to the Affordable Care Act because what it really did is it put the, the country in dire strait and it was economical, economical dereliction of duty. Absolutely. And there's no principled reason why anybody would be against, again, we're already being taxed this money. It's getting piped out of states to other places that decided to expand Medicaid. We have the worst insurance uh, insured population rates in the country. And yeah, $60 billion was shuttled out of the out of the state because the Republican legislator wanted an opportunity to vote against an Obamacare program. And it's come back to the legislature in a number of different forms. Uh, the most watered down version was, okay, let's, okay, let's not expand Medicaid except for pregnant mothers for the 12 months after they give birth and their newborn children. And the Republicans voted down even that watered down uh, version that would only have protected uh, neonatal care. And th there's, there's no platform they have no solution for the healthcare uh, for for healthcare other than to rip up the modest pr uh, progress that we have made um so healthcare future congressman, uh, future, congressman future congressman let me tell you that is not <laughs> pro life that is mm -hmm. pro death that is Absolutely. not pro life that is pro death and i think as a, a, as good as good people trying to become politicians to help the people, I think we need to make the language more graphic to let Americans mm -hmm. understand that the policies you support are the policies that are, that's better for them, that gives them life. That is a real pro-life position. Well, and we see this time and time again over many different issues. We see pragmatic solutions to real world problems coming from the left, and we see divisive partisanship and dog whistles coming from the right. And once again, they're trying to make this election about socialism, which there is not a socialist platform anywhere on the ticket up or down. They try and say, we're coming for your guns, which 
nobody in the past uh, Democratic administration, you know, we had eight years of Obama, everybody still had their guns. Um, they're, they're, the policies that they're trying to protect, um, you know, aren't under threat. They're, they're, the pragmatic solutions being offered from the left uh, are, you know, are trying to solve real world problems. And if there are pragmatic solutions coming from the right, I'd be interested to hear them, but I haven't. And we really don't see um, policy being discussed on any kind of a deep level, uh, either with my opponent at the state level or all the way up to the presidential ticket. Um, you see race baiting, you see, uh, you know, fear tactics, but you don't see policy discussions. They don't say, okay, well, you don't like Obamacare. What's your plan for health care? So let's do that. Let's do that, Travis. Let's do that. Uh, I'm going to go down policy by policy. Healthcare, how are you going to make the people's health care in your district better? Sure. So expanding Medicaid is the first, uh, and again, as close to a silver bullet as we have, uh, making balance billing illegal at the state level so that, so, so that insurance companies can't double back when an emergency visit decides to, uh, uh, and then bill the balance back to the individual patients, clamping down on prescription drug prices, clamping down on runaway insurance, insurance costs. Those are a lot of the state level policies that can give us um, that can give us access to health care. Also making sure that women's and family planning clinics are accessible, particularly in urban areas, because those are first tier uh, protections for health care access to a lot of low income families. And we have to make sure that the people who don't have a lot of disposable income have access to the to the, the clinics that are available and powerful to help them uh, have healthy and meaningful lives. How are you going to keep us safe? And specifically, how are you going to ensure that people who look like the host of this program mm -hmm. does not have to fear uh, being, in, being next to authorities, the police, et cetera? And, and criminal justice reform is one of those six pillars that we, we've decided to build this campaign on. Um, demilitarizing the police has, can both prioritize a lot of the spending for where police need to be, while also making sure that you know we don't have police responding to homeless charges or uh, mental health care charges and those sorts of things, making sure we've got social workers when, where social workers are important also. Uh, I'm in favor of a state level licensing board for law enforcement officers, which would um, make sure that every law enforcement officer in Texas has some minimal um, training, a lot like the state boards for nursing and social work. Um, this would also have a license that can be revoked if you have somebody who uh, is repeat offending, which right now they just, if somebody, you know, gets an offense in one jurisdiction, they just jump over to the next county and they keep on, uh, they keep on committing. Um, I'm for ending the war on drugs and freeing 10,000 nonviolent drug offenders from state prisons, um, legalizing and taxing the heck out of marijuana. Um, and uh, there's a number of other policies uh, locally that, that help make sure that our justice justice system actually has justice in it and uh, is protecting people instead of persecuting people. Now it is true that Donald Trump has corrupted our democracy. Donald Trump thinks he's a, he's a monarch and not a president. He thinks he has ultimate control. I know you're, at, you're running for a state uh, mm -hmm. congressional position, but you also have some uh, ir indirect power in, 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 in how you can play a part in the entire political system. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah. Well, and actually, the, the elections are administered by the state. So right. as far as like how we register people, access to polling places, whether we've got mail-in ballots available to everybody, those are all things that I'm massively in favor of. Um, well, uh, I've signed the National Pledge to end gerrymandering to make sure that our districts here are not drawn in a partisan manner that really means that the primary is the general election in a lot of these districts. We need to draw purple districts so that people have to come back to the middle of the table and have these pragmatic discussions that we've been talking about. Um, Mail-in ballots, same-day voter registration, online voter registration, which we just got an amazing um, court ruling on earlier this week, um, and making sure that it's as easy to uh, register to vote online as it is to renew your driver's license online, um, and making sure that we've got all eligible voters in Texas registered and educated on the voting process is really going to make this not just not just a bluer Texas, but it's going to be more representative of the people who live here because the barriers to voting have been put up 
over generations. And the people who know how to get through those barriers like them being up because they keep people like you and me from the polls. Well, not people like you and me because we're going to vote no matter what. Absolutely. <laughs> Those people at the margins, those people who, you know, might only have one day off during an early voting period, or, you know, they've got three small children and they can't keep them staying in line. You know, there's, there's a lot of people at the margins that voting is very difficult for. We need to make sure that those people's votes count too. All right, Travis, let me uh, ask you to give us a closing statement. And please, in that closing statement, with uh, your position, let folks know not only here in your local district, but all over the country, why it is so important to engage, why you decided to engage, and how everyone can really make a difference. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, I decided to engage because not being engaged wasn't an option. I was seeing the country fall apart around me. And I've got a two-year-old son who's someday going to ask me what I did uh, in this key time. And come hell or high water, I'm going to be able to say I fought tooth and nail. I left everything on the field. And we're pushing for um, change here locally as well as nationwide. Uh, get involved at whatever level. And there was a really inspirational uh, quote from uh, President Obama earlier on this year that says, uh, uh, when he said, if what you were doing requires no sacrifice you need to do more and everybody whatever it is however you get involved whether it's voting for the first time or signing off for one of our volunteer phone bank shifts or making small dollar contributions which is how we run races like this without the influence of, cor uh, of corporate PACs um, whatever that we're doing we just all need to step it up one notch nobody nobody has to go and personally you know run for president in order to make a difference it's all just about these marginal efforts and giving a little bit more than we were otherwise comfortable in doing so. I tell them how they can help you, how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, uh, so our website is travisfortexas.com. That's Travis, the number four, TX.com. That's also my handle on all the social media platforms at Travis, the number four, TX. And uh, I'd love to get you involved. Uh, soon, shoot me a line through the website, make a small dollar contribution, sign up for a volunteer shift. And this is very well could be the, ne the necessary race to have a Democratic majority in the Texas legislature next year. Travis, Travis. Bolt. Congress, State Congressional District 29, thank you so kindly for having been on Politics Done Right. Thanks for having me on, Egberto. I'm Egberto Woolies, host of Politics Done Right, an independent news program. I post several news videos of interest every day. I ask you so kindly to subscribe to my channel and please leave me some comments. Thank you very much.